Right, let's jump right into it. Welcome to Gavin Lon Digital. Hi, my name is Lon. In this tutorial, we'll discuss C Sharp operators. In C Sharp, an operator is a program element that is applied to one or more operands in an expression or statement. Unary operators such as the double plus operator perform an operation with one operand. Binary operators perform the operation with two operands such as mathematical operations, plus for addition, minus for subtraction, asterisk for multiplication, and the forward slash element for division. A ternary operator in C-sharp performs an operation with three operands. The question mark and the colon elements are used to perform a ternary operation. I thought the best way to explore operators would be through a series of examples. I've chosen a few commonly used operators and created very basic examples of the use of these operators. Tables containing supplementary C-sharp operator information will be provided in a PDF document that can be downloaded from GitHub. Details of the appropriate GitHub repository can be found below in the description under the GitHub Documents section. Details of code repositories can be found under the GitHub Code section. So the operators we'll explore in these examples are unary operators, multiplicative operators, additive operators, equality operators, relational operators, logical conditional and null operators, assignment and compound assignment operators, and shift operators. I'm going to be going fairly quickly through these examples because there are quite a few of them. So obviously video is a great medium where you can go through the content at your own pace. With each example, the result will be written to the console screen each line written to the screen will denote a result. Each result written to the console screen will be preceded by a label, so you can easily cross-reference the results, i.e. from the console screen, to code in Visual Studio. The unique label for each result will consist of a capital E followed by a numeric value, which will start at 1 and be incremented by 1 for every result. Just a reminder, the code written here can be downloaded from a GitHub repository. Details of where you can find the appropriate repository is in the description. So the purpose of the code in these examples is to demonstrate the use of C-sharp operators. We are going to ignore a lot of code best practices here, for example code reuse, which will be explored in an upcoming tutorial. This is in order to save time and ensure that the message of this tutorial, focusing on C-sharp operators, is clear. OK, unary operators, which contains one operand. Plus plus can be used to increment a value. For example, int a equals to 1, a plus plus. a will now store a value of 2 because the plus plus operator applied to the a variable has resulted in its value being incremented by 1. OK, I'm going to wrap the console.write line method in a new method named log to screen. So this method will be responsible for writing a result to the console screen. It must be a static method because the code that will call this method is in a static method, i.e. the main method. So this method won't return a value, so we'll use the void keyword to indicate this. This method will accept one parameter, which will be defined as a string. We'll call this parameter line. The purpose of this code is to write the data stored in the line parameter to the console screen. OK, the exclamation mark operator is a unary operator. It negates its operand. So bool b equals to true, bool c equals to exclamation mark b. So c equals to not b. The exclamation mark preceding b negates the value of b, so c is assigned to a value of not b, which is false. So let's look at examples of multiplicative operators. So int d equals to 5, int e equals to d multiplied by 2. The result of this, of course, is 10. The forward slash symbol represents a divide operation. int f equals to 10. int g equals to f forward slash 2 which can be read as g equals to f divided by 2. The result is, of course, 5. The next operator is represented by the percentage symbol and denotes the modulus operation. So int h equals to 10, int i equals to h, percentage 3. The result is 1, because 3 goes into 10 3 times and leaves a remainder of 1. The modulus operation returns the remainder of a division operation. If there is no remainder, the operation returns zero. Let's look at additive operation examples. The plus operator. int j equals to 20, int k equals to j plus 5. This will result in a mathematical operation, which will of course return a value of 25.
Please note that the plus operator, when applied between two strings, will result in a concatenation operation, which is the joining of more than one string from end to end. The minus operator. int l equals to 20, int m equals to l minus 5. The result of this mathematical operation will of course be 15. So let's move on to equality operators. The double equals operator, when applied between two operands, will return true if the operands are equal and false if the operands are not equal. Bull n equals to true, bull o equals to n double equals false. So variable o will be equal to false because n is not equal to false. n equals to false. o equals to n double equals false. So the variable o will equal to true. So let's look at the exclamation equals operator. So the exclamation equals operator does the opposite of the double equals operator, i.e. returns true if its two operands are not equal and false if they are equal. So n is equal to true, o is equal to n is not equal to false in parentheses. So the o variable will equal to true. And conversely, if n were equal to false, n is not equal to false would be a false statement, so o would equal to false. So let's move on to relational operators, the greater than operator. int p equals to 4, bool q equals to, in parentheses, p is greater than 2. p is clearly greater than 2, so q will be set to true. The less than operator, so is p less than 1? Of course not, p is equal to 4, so this statement is false. Q, in this case, will be equal to false. The greater than or equal to operator. So Q is equal to, in parentheses, P is greater than or equal to 4. Q, in this case, will be true because P is greater than or equal to 4 is a true statement. P is obviously equal to 4. Q is equal to, in parentheses, P is greater than or equal to 5. This is obviously a false statement. P is equal to 4, and so P cannot be greater than or equal to 5. The less than or equal to operator. Q is equal to, then in parentheses, P is less than or equal to 4. This is a true statement. Q is equal to, in parentheses, P is less than or equal to 5. This is also a true statement. The is operator. So the is operator allows a developer to check a variable's type. So for example, we haven't discussed boxing and unboxing yet, but the object R equals to 12 line of code will result and the integer value of 12 being boxed in an object type. All types in C-sharp ultimately derive from the object class. So if you want to check if variable r is of a particular type in code, you can use the is operator for this purpose, i.e. object r equals 12, bool s equals to in parentheses, r is int. So this operation would return true. This line of code would initialize the bool variable s to true. So r equals to 10.2, so s equals to r is float. s would be set to false because any floating point literal is by default considered a double by the C-sharp compiler. Let's show this. So s equals to, in parentheses, r is double. This statement will return true. So let's look at the as operator. So object t equals to the text hello world. String u equals to t as string. So t will be converted to a string before assigned to the u variable. If the as operator fails because the operands are incompatible, null will be returned. So now let's look at logical, conditional, and null operator examples. So the ampersand operator applied between two integer operands will result in a bitwise operation. Bitwise mathematics involves mathematics at the binary level. I've included this so you can have an awareness of this operator which is a logical AND operator. int v equals to 7, w equals to v and 3. So the result of this bitwise operation is 3. So here we have a pipe symbol which represents a bitwise OR operation, w equals to v or 3. So here the variable w is set to a result of 7. So let's move on to a ternary operator which is a conditional operator. This operator is represented by the question mark and the colon. So int x equals to 6. This line of code reads like this. y equals to if x is less than 6, then return the string x is less than 6, else return the string x is greater than or equal to 6. And of course x equals to 6, so the string x is greater than or equal to 6 is returned. 
So here's an example of a null operator. This null operator is represented by two question marks. So string z equals to null. So this line of code reads like this. String a1 equals to z if it is not null, else it will equal to the text, hello world. So in this case z is null, so a1 will be assigned the text, hello world. Now let's look at assignment and compound assignment operator examples. So int b1 equals to 500. We have simply assigned a value of 500 to b1. Plus equals. Int c1 equals to 2. Int d1 equals to b1, which is 500. d1 plus equals to c1. This simply adds the value of c1 to the value of d1 and stores this result in the d1 variable. And you can achieve a similar operation for multiplication by using the asterisk symbol with the equals symbol. So let's initialize e1 to b1, which is 500. e1 is now set to a value of 1000, i.e. 500 multiplied by 2. Let's look at the shift operators, which is mathematics done at the binary level. The details of this are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but for now I would argue that it is good to have a basic awareness of these operators. So int f1 equals to 8, int g1 equals to f1, left shift 1. This will shift the binary representation of the f1 integer one place to the left. So the integer value assignment to g1 will be 16. So let's look at the right shift operator. This will shift the binary representation of the f1 integer one place to the right. So the integer value assignment to g1 in this case will be 4. Just a reminder, you can download this code and run it, and using the E prefixed unique labels, it will be easy to cross-reference the results written to the screen with the code where these labels are appropriately placed in the comments. So I'm just gonna scan through the code quickly and tidy up the code a bit, and let's run the code. Associativity. When two or more operators that have the same precedence are present in an expression, they are evaluated based on associativity. Left associative operators are evaluated in order from left to right. For example, A multiplied by B divided by C. A multiplied by B will first be evaluated and then the result of this will be divided by C. Whether the operators in an expression are left associative or right associative, the operands of each expression are evaluated first from left to right. For example, the following statement, x is equal to w plus y multiplied by z, is evaluated in the following order, x, w, y, z, multiply, plus, equals. You can change the order imposed by operator precedence and associativity by using parentheses. For example, x is equal to 5 plus 10 multiplied by 10. The result of this calculation will ordinarily be evaluated in the following order, 10 multiplied by 10, then add 5, which equals to 105. If we add parentheses around the 5 plus 10, like this, x is equal to, in parentheses, 5 plus 10, and then we multiply the 10, the result of this will be 150. Because the parentheses used in this statement is imposing a different order of operations on this statement. The parentheses in this example will mean the 5 plus 10 is first evaluated, and then the result of this calculation is multiplied by 10 resulting in 150. One thing we have not covered in this tutorial is operator overloading. This will be discussed in an upcoming tutorial. We have discussed that operators in C-sharp is an element applied to one or more operands in a statement to perform a specific operation. We have discussed what it means by binary, unary, and ternary with regards to C-sharp operators. We went through multiple examples of using C-sharp operators in code. We then discussed the significance in C-sharp of precedence, associativity, and parentheses regarding multiple operators in a statement. Please see the description below for details regarding any supplementary information associated with this tutorial. All code and related documentation can be downloaded from GitHub repositories. Details of where you can find these repositories are below in the description. Please hit the thumbs up icon if you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, and please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.